This is a clock that I call Gravity. It's a, a very large wooden gear clock that's a an artistic rendering of a tower clock. And it's uh, being built as a commission piece uh, for Artisan Works, a very large art gallery here in Rochester, New York. This clock's been in process for about three years now and uh, I'm very happy to say it's getting close to completion. Uh, the frame of the clock is about 12 feet high and is made up of old hand hewn timbers that have been recovered from a barn that was probably built sometime before 1880. All the marks in the timbers indicate that these timbers were squared off by hand using a, a, a tool like, a, like an axe of some sort. A lot of work I'm sure. Uh, there's a bell that uh, I believe used to reside on the front of an old steam locomotive and uh, the clock will ring that bell once every hour and let a passing bell strike. The gears are uh, made of quarter sawn cherry. Each gear is made up of 20 or 30 individual pieces of wood and two layers of wood with a aluminum core hidden inside. Uh, the two layers had recesses made to the shape of the aluminum core. Uh, each side half the depth of the thickness of the aluminum and then it was all sandwiched together and then all the brass pins were put in to connect uh, the wood and the aluminum into one very strong assembly. So because the gears are so large I felt I needed that uh, extra source of strength. Uh, I think the largest gear is around 24 inches in diameter. The rope will be a hemp rope and the weight I'm planning on using a large rock probably weighing somewhere in the neighborhood of 125 to 150 pounds. The green is a cherry with a green dye. Uh, most uh, antique tower clocks were, were green in color. Uh, it's like John Deere Tractor, Seth Thomas, and E. Howard in particular used to make their their clock frames out of cast iron and, and they, they painted them green. The frame of this particular clock is made of cherry, wenge, and lace woods. You can see I've used some pillow block bearings. There's ball bearings on the lower end of the train where the high stress is and then there's more traditional brass bushings further up. The bearing hole is purposely off-center on these bushings so that they can be rotated uh, and thereby precisely controlling the depthing of the gears. One very unusual feature that this clock has that is uh, an idea that I took from John Harrison who built clocks in the 1750s uh, and that is that the individual pins in the pinions rotate within the pinions. There's little bearings on each side and they rotate very freely. The reason for this is so that as the teeth rotate in and out of the pinions the pinion leaves rotate on the bearings and there's very very little friction involved. So the clock should run very free and very smooth. All the pinions in this clock will have the same feature, rotating pins on bearings. Anyway, there it is, a work in progress. Hopefully it'll be done in another few months. Thanks for watching.